Hey guys, welcome to another Blender tutorial. This time I'm going to show you how to break something like I like in this little video I'm showing up right now in post. Hopefully I remember. Um, but it, I'm going to show you guys how to break something like that using the RBD add-on. You can break stuff using uh, the cell fracture add-on that's inside of Blender by default, but I don't like using that because it's very com complicated and it's just it I'll deal with that later. I'll probably make a separate tutorial for that, but for now we're going to use the RBD Lab add-on, which uh, you can find in the Blender Market below. I will leave a link. Um, so yeah, let's uh, le let's get started. All right, so in a in an empty scene, we're going to you could either model your own pillar. Uh, I'm going to just uh, import a pillar using the Sketchfab add-on, which I will also leave a link below. So let's just um, let's just get a a simple singular pillar just to not complicate things. In this case, it comes out huge, so I'm going to scale that down a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. Let's see, make sure to uh, apply the scale so that it's uh, it's not, you know, messing up with physics and stuff. You can compare it to a cube, which is roughly the size of a human, more or less. So we know if that's more or less the size of a human, then we can assume the pillar will be around this tall. I'm not actually sure if the cube is the size of a human. That's what I heard from like someone, so I just follow that scale. But who cares, really? Uh, actually, I do care because it does affect the physics, so I'm just going to scale that a little bit higher up. So now we want to uh, break, uh, start the add-on. So... Sketchfab does this thing where it breaks into triangles, so that shouldn't affect us too much, but I'm, as a precaution, I'm going to merge by distance to make sure that there's no like loose vertices. And after that, I'm going to origin to geometry so that its origin is centered. Now we're going to head to the RBD add-on. With our item selected, we are going to choose our methods. So the first steps to fracturing is choosing methods. I like to use the annotation tool to make preci precise uh, fractures where I want them to be. So like say I want them to appear more in this area. I could just make a couple of drawings here so that Blender knows, okay, in this area I'm going to add a bit more detail in the annotation and then we could do a standard scatter for the rest bump that up to maybe 120 except you could mess with boolean texture and organic I've really only used standard and organic but you could use whatever after that we are going to uh, really I leave the rest to default if you're if the item is wood you use one of these directions, but since it's not wood, we're not going to do that. You can name the single output, but I'm just going to leave it at auto, so fracture, and there we go. You see it's fractured. Uh, we are also going to quickly inspect around it, see if there's any bad fractures that we need to fix. I don't see any, so we can clear the annotation and apply extra fracture detail. Let's be, add extra details. This is just gonna add a little bit more detail inside compared to what it used to be. Also gonna turn on auto smooth and apply. After that, we now have our fractured pillar in its collections it, it's so you of course have your original pillar which you can pull back up if you want you have sand pillar low and high which will pertain to this visualization 
you could see the high uh, poly or the low poly just so you can get uh, you know low poly is for performance but it switches out to high when it's in render so there's no problems there all right after this we move on to the physics tab let's add our ground which there's a handy add ground button so if you don't want to create your own ground you can just press that button to create it for you with all the with collision and um, rigid body passive already on it so there we go next thing we want to do is we want to create a rigid body for our pillar so the the pillars collection is already selected up here so all we really have to do is hit add rigid body it's in concrete because this is a pillar so that's fine and done if I hit play the pillar falls However, it falls all at once and in all individual pieces if you ever see something break or fall apart in real life they fall in clumps so that is in constraints now we can I like to start deactivate like not start deactivated just click the deactivation so it's um it doesn't it, it, it's a bit better I, I find in my opinion but usually it doesn't make too much of a difference but I just have it out of habit so let's continue on now we're gonna go into constraints we can have the entire collection be under a constraint this is just gonna group everything into one and sometimes you will want that or we could add specific selections into constraints if we wish or we can generate clusters I like to generate clusters because it's uh, it's just a lot more fun so I'm going to up the radius to three up the cluster count to four generate clusters and I'm gonna try to find one that covers the best okay that works so we're going to uh, actually let's continue generating because I kind of want more yeah, there we go that's a good one we got a good selection there so from messing with the settings and generation we can now apply the we can now change the strength of things so let's say we want this to be two two thousand five five hundred leave everything else on default create constraints and now if we press play we see that a chunk falls off here that's not what we want so we want to up that update it still falls off you can uh, see like the different cluster things here so you see it is selected it's perhaps too separated to be considered so mm, we might have to re-roll the clusters again okay let's uh, do that make it 2500 or six there we go create constraints and then for that top bit I'm going to select the top I'm going to select ignore chunks with constraints so it doesn't pick the ones that already have constraints and there you go now if you see that the ones that didn't get picked up by the first chunk get selected so let's continue on uh, we are going to now press play see what happens all right that's good nothing falls which is what we want so that we can animate the glue strength now it, this is took me a little bit to get my head around this so first this is your initial frame the frame where it starts your first keyframe and then your second keyframe and it base and then the strength of what it starts with to what it becomes it's basically your keyframes but all automatically added to you but you can't see them in the timeline it's a bit weird 
So I am just going to show you. So I, in fra at frame 25, I wanted to start at 6,500. But by frame 30, actually 35, I wanted to be at 420. Add that. And now if we press play and let it the playhead go through, you see once it reaches 25, it will start to uh, separate a bit more. At least it should because the, there you go. And as it falls, you see the constraints are glued together. There you go. And then they fall apart. You got these chunks like uh, like this piece right here. Now you see kind of here, still stuck together. So that's kind of what we want. Uh, we can also, just to make things more interesting, if we select this bottom portion, we can, if we go back to physics, we could just set that as a passive so that it doesn't actually break apart. Let's press play one more time and let, let it roll through. Once it hits uh, 25, you will start to see something happening because the constraints will be weakened. There you go. But the bottom pillar is still is going to stand still. So it just affects the top portion. So I don't actually like that. So I'm going to undo that. But just to show you. Next, what we're going to do after the constraints, we are already satisfied with that motion. Uh, we are going to bake. So in this case, I don't think I need 250. I'm just going to settle with 150. And I'm going to hit bake. This process does take a while, so I'm probably just going to skip this. All right, with that done, we are going to now uh, change end frame to 150 because I forgot to do that. Let's press play and we see our pillar collapses on itself. Pretty cool. I also forgot to mention to like show you guys but uh, you see like where the um, object was uh, annotated. It was it, there's a little bit more detail than there is on the rest. So that's why I like to use annotation. In this case, it doesn't matter too much, but it's still a nice touch, I guess. All right. Continuing on, we are now going to see this one more time just because we see that it breaks, but it's very standard, you know. So we want to add a little bit of a more dramatic flair. We use particles. In the particle tab, we are going to bring up the breeze. We are going to use broken. This basically means anything moving at a certain speed here will emit a particle until it stops moving. So we're going to create the debris. It will create its own default debris. You can create a custom debris, but I'm not going to get too far into that. So maybe that'll be another tutorial. And here you see it selects the pieces that move at, at that speed. So if we press play, as it falls, particles will come out and bounce on the ground that already has the collision the collision modifier so particles can bounce on them and if we go back to the bake tab we can bake all dy dynamics and it will bake our uh, particle system once we're satisfied with that there we go and that is pretty much the essential you can add uh, you know, dust, smoke, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so, like, from particles, from the mesh, so you can emit uh, smoke as it falls. I'm not going to do that because it does take up a lot of uh, space on my computer due to this, to be the nature of VDBs, which Blender currently is running on. Uh, there's a couple tools, scatter restored, fracture restored to restore your uh fractures I get as it says and motion and activators are a bit more complicated so that will probably be a different tutorial but that is how you basically break something in uh, using RBD labs you saw it didn't take us too long to get 
a result that I person that I like that I found acceptable. If we quickly see this in Eevee, you'll see it takes uh it still has the same texture as before. It just falls apart. And there it goes. All right. You can see it also automatically like gives a material to the inside. You can replace this material or edit it and it will basically just change. So let's make this a bit more yellow to match the ex the exterior. There you go. Now that makes more sense. Uh, you can also edit the particles if we go down here to where the debris are. We can see that like it's gray. So instead of gray, we are going to make this more yellowish. Now you can create your own debris, put it into a custom set, uh, into a custom, and have the RBD labs use that. I'm not gonna do it because I'm lazy, but. You can do it if it's like wood chips or something more specific. Now, there's not much else to do but set up a camera and stuff. But if you wanted to add smoke and other stuff, then uh, you literally just click the buttons. It's dead, dead, dead ass this simple. So I really recommend you get RBD Labs. I will link it below. But for now, I hope you have a good one and uh, have fun breaking stuff.